Hey everyone, Fuse Man coming at you, and hope this video finds you doing super well. Now, this video is going to be all about different types of solutions that exist for VR hand input. Now, that <laughs> said, this video was originally going to include the solutions, as well as design, as well as whether or not you want to consider using controllers versus hand input. In addition, we also had a small little tutorial at the end that was going to be about using the leap motion, send that data over to a quest so that you can start playing around with some very simple hand interactions that you could do on the quest. So that was a way too long of a video. <laughs> it was probably going to end up being well over an hour and didn't think that would convey all the different things in a meaningful way. So this is just the part one of that. And what I want to go ahead and do is set a like goal of 50 likes. And if we can get that on this video, I'll go ahead and post the other videos. But it's just a means for me to basically gauge how excited you guys are for some more hand tracking videos. And definitely leave a comment below just so that I can gauge as well if you really want to start developing for it or more interested in the design side of things. That'll just genuinely help me to help prioritize that. Or if you're not interested at all, <laughs> definitely let me know as well. That, those are the type of things, just because hand tracking being so new, it's it's one of those things where could spend a lot of time making videos for that, but there are also some other videos that I'd like to make as well. So any input is super appreciated and I'm definitely looking forward to hearing from you guys. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do with this intro and then let me go ahead, let's jump into my laptop and let's talk about various different solutions. All right, so let's talk about a bunch of different solutions here for VR hand tracking. So first off, Let's talk about Leap Motion very quickly. This has been a solution that's been in the industry for quite some time now. They initially started out as a desktop solution, but then kind of quickly realized that VR would be a much better route to go for. So they started doing that. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the page here, you can also see that they've worked on some stuff for augmented reality. And so this specific solution is for the tutorial that I kind of put together half-hazardly if you will that's what i ended up using a leap motion to get the hand tracking and send that over to the quest again if you guys are interested in that let me know otherwise i'll just end up doing a tutorial probably much down the road once we get hand tracking onto the quest like natively outside of that they've done some pretty cool things so let me scroll here this was something they did for the void if you've never tried the void i definitely highly recommend trying it they use hand tracking for some parts of the experience but they also do have their own peripherals that end up getting tracked in six stuff so it's really really cool in that regard and super awesome that this technology actually goes with the void i actually didn't know that until i was doing research for this video here is their AR glasses and the total for this ends up coming to around I think $200 if you're interested I'll leave an Amazon link below in case you want to buy it but quite frankly if you're mainly interested in hand tracking I'd probably check out some of the other solutions or wait until Quest gets hand tracking just so that you get it in one package that is something that developers will end up using or people will end up using long term speaking of the Quest we saw here we got hand tracking this is probably a pretty good image to see kind of, I mean, there's a little bit of marketing BS that's going into this, but at the same time, it does pretty uh, sort of accurately show off what hand tracking might look like on the Quest. The other good way, in case you didn't get to try the demos at OC6, are they, they have a couple talks here, which are slightly hit or hit or miss in my opinion so we have this designing a new input modality talk which i think was on the second day and then we have a the more of the technology side on the first day and so this one i think was a pretty interesting talk uh, it's kind of ironic because they end up contradicting each other so this one they go through a bunch of design inputs ultimately using the pinch input for cell haptic feedback and optimizing around that and they they get claim at the end of this that they're going to go ahead and give away some guidelines later in the year i guess and then ironically in this talk one of the developers i guess the indie dev who made one of the experiences intentionally says we, we're basically going to take the guidelines and throw it out the door <laughs> so kind of ironic i kind of tend to agree more with this talk. You also get some interesting statistics on the technology itself and how the hand tracking CV ends up working. So if you're more interested in that side of things, I'd definitely check this one, hand tracking, deep dive, technology design experiences, just to get a better feel for what that might end up looking like on the quest. All right, let's switch back over here. So that's Quest in a nutshell. We'll definitely learn more a little bit later. I should mention now, just based on that technology talk, 
all these solutions pretty much end up using machine learning and deep learning, or I guess deep learning is a subset of machine learning. To me, they all end up getting qualified as glorified statistics on a scale or on steroids, depending on what you prefer. <laughs> the idea here being put a lot of data into an algorithm, it turns it, calculates some statistics, you get something out. So good data in, good data out. Uh, and vice versa, bad, bad, bad data in, bad data out, is how it ends up typically working. And they talk a lot more about that in that talk. So if you kind of want to learn behind the scenes of how that might work, definitely recommend that one. But here, I mean, I, th I think it's still super exciting that they're, they're able to get this on a mobile processor, which is really, really, like, I mean, insane if you really think about how they've optimized everything so that you're really only losing seven minutes of playtime. Let's go ahead here. Uh, HTC has been working on hand tracking for quite a while at this point, and they have some prototypes here. It's still early access, but anyone can check it out. You just scroll down to the bottom of this web page. I'll leave this link, of course, in the description if you want to play around with it, assuming you have a Vive or a Vive Pro, which I think most of my <laughs> audience does. Um, also, this should work with the Cosmos. I'll get to that in just a second. But literally, you just agree to the license, click download, you'll get the Unity package. You can plug that into Unity, and literally within Unity, click play with your Vive attached and you can start playing around with the hand tracking here. They have two couple scenes here. I mean, if we we'll quickly take a look, you'll see that we, I mean, they have kind of a laser-based approach. You can grab things, you can draw to create objects, things that, I mean, you'd still want to experiment and see how that might feel. On the Vive, I will say when I played around with it, it is a little jittery. So you, and I mean, the reason for that is because it's using only one camera there, whereas 5 Pro and for Cosmos, which is, is effectively out at this point, they end up using the two cameras here. As for Cosmos, let me just get out this out of the way. They made an update a couple days ago where you can get the Vive Cosmos, and of course this already supports the Vive Pro, Vive Focus, as well as the original Vive, which is what I ended up playing around with. So that's that's that. So really cool that, that this is happening. I'd imagine might get a release probably around the same time early 2020 for an official release onto the Vive. Although, to be fair, if you still want to play around with it, it's early access. Technically, you could build an app with it, but I'd probably wait until they get to 1.0 before doing that. Let's see. So I mentioned this. Some other solutions I want to talk about. I mean, the, the ones I mentioned here already are kind of the big ones. So Leap, Quest, and Vive. But some of the others that might be either have already had done a ton of work and is now just a matter of time before they get in or are still kind of on the horizon here. So uh, Google AI August uh, 2019 just put out a blog post talking about some more deep learning technologies for gesture tracking and hand tracking. So you can see that here uh, you have a bunch of different hands just different dashers and this one's able to track multiple hands here. One thing we don't see is occlusion and speaking of occlusion in both of these scenarios, yeah, I mean, if your hands overlap, you lose sight of one, at least one hand tracking. That's unclear if that happens in this solution, but they, they haven't shown it. So unless you try it out, which I haven't tried it out, you probably run into issues with me, my guess, because that's kind of a hard computer vision problem. And unfortunately, there's not much we can do with that because in most solutions that we play around with, we're probably ending up with four, two to four cameras that are on a headset that are not really optimized to get the maximum depth possible to see around where your hands might be. So not, not much you can do there, but at the same time, the fact that we have it and it's pretty consistent is pretty cool. Next here, uh, Intel RealSense has been working on things for quite a while. I know this has discontinued, but effectively their whole SDK is basically just a peripheral that you can attach. Sometimes it's built into computers, so if you have one, you can try playing around with it. And it can it can literally just it'll do hand tracking. So you can, you can try that around here. And so this is just going some literal just drawing around. So in that sense, it's pretty cool. And I mean, Again, this says discontinued. It's kind of hard to find something that is working now, but uh, at the same time, I, I know they have some working prototypes if you're if you're looking to play around with it. Because at the end of the day, RealSense is just a depth sensor, so the software behind it can pretty much do whatever you want. So if you want to rebuild it or use this old SDK, that should be possible, I think. 
Some other ones here, obviously Microsoft has had their skin in the game for quite some time. I mean, pretty much since the Kinect, <laughs> if you will. And now that's going to go on to HoloLens 2 once that comes out. So we should be able to play around with hand tracking there as well. Most likely in late 2020 would be my guess. And it'll be kind of pure speculation, hard to say, but we might also end up getting, if we end up getting at all any VR headset that's tied to Xbox, then that'll most likely have hand tracking as well and we'll find about that about probably around e3 2020 so in that sense microsoft's always been in this space i mean 2014 is a while away and they've been working on a bunch of different stuff including force feedback haptic feedback you name it and uh, i mean they have a lot of smart people over there that are working on all this crazy research <laughs> The last thing I want to mention before we wrap up this video is this talk here. It's not really related to solutions per se, but it's more of how you would go about developing for things. And this is still on the horizon, but I think it's really cool to see the kind of a preview package of how the Unity's VR and AR input, I refuse to say XR, <laughs> will, will end up uh, including both controllers that are cross-platform as well as interactions that you could do with these controllers. And moreover, they mentioned a few times that you'll also be able to add hand tracking as a generic input method as well. So, I mean, they mention it, the, the most of this is more kind of on the framework side of things, especially in the earlier side of the talk. The second half is on the quest and optimization, uh, but there was basically, this is what I was exactly looking for. I'm surprised I found it in the first go. Uh, this on API convergence, basically, obviously for Oculus having a bunch of different headsets and having to support them across a variety of different APIs is kind of a pain, especially when each device can do different things. So they're looking for API convergence. And also, that of course applies to HTC Vive, the Valve Index, uh, Knuckles controllers, Vive's controllers, pretty much you name it. That's what this is trying to do with a cross-platform API integrate that into Unity, have literally just write C-sharp, get the input, boom, everything works. Uh, that's still a while away. Uh, this was supposed to be a preview package that's coming in 2019.3, which isn't even out yet, at least at the time of the recording, and I guess maybe rolls in around 2020. I mean, obviously, Unity's been working on input for quite some time now. Uh, it's probably been close to four years <laughs> if I had to put a date on it. So maybe 2020 will end up being a little optimistic. But nonetheless, really cool to see that it's at least being worked on and talked about. And they have some prototypes that are working. So if you haven't checked this specific talk out, definitely recommend it. And you can watch it at 2x speed because that's probably the, the best and fastest way to go about that. So that's everything solutions oriented. And this is just part one of a giant piece on hand tracking that if you guys are interested in, definitely let me know in the comments below if you want to see everything else that I have to say on this from the design side to getting a basic prototype working on the quest. But I think that'll pretty much do this for this video. I uh, look forward to hearing from you guys and thanks for watching. So until next time, this has been Fuse Man and I'm signing out.